bring this down here since it is Sunday night. All right. Y'all can go ahead and be turning to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Brother Kevin, do you ever type out your notes and you see like a, uh, I don't know, a uh, something, what am I trying to think of? Like a typo in your notes in the middle of your sermon that throws you off? The very top, I have Acts chapter 12, but we're going to be in Acts chapter 13, all right? So, throwing me right off the bat. Throwing, <laughs> verse mistake. Oh, yeah, that would be nice, yes. So Acts chapter 13, we're just going to look at the first three verses tonight. Um, really just a wonderful passage. Many of you all are familiar with it, and most of the time we see that as kind of a missions passage, and it is that for sure, a missions passage um, where Paul and Barnabas are kind of sent off at the church of Antioch. Um, but tonight I, I think it has a wonderful message for us, especially beginning a new year. Um, I love New Year's, like I said a, a little bit last week, I shared a little bit um, with the mic, uh, love New Year's resolutions, just a fresh start, just a fresh motivation, you know, and as Christians, we really love that, we love, we kind of start over every day, right, we die to ourselves every day, it's, it's, a, it's a new walk every day, and so um, a, a fresh encounter with the Lord is what we need, and so we're, we're fans of, of resolutions, we're fans of setting new goals, and many times those goals are for life, many times they're just for the week, uh, many times they're just for the next 10 minutes, you know. Um, we set goals, and we want to we wanna reach those goals. And so tonight, I kind of want to put a goal for 2016 in front of your face, okay, in front of you. And uh, hopefully, you give you encouragement to kind of strive towards that goal, okay. And it pertains to worship and mission. So we're going we're gonna to look at Acts chapter 13. You can stay seated. I'm just going to read the first three verses. We're going to kind of unpack those a little bit. Acts chapter 13, beginning of verse 1, it says, Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers. Do we have that here? Let's start, stop right there. Do we have that here? Yeah, good deal. Prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who is called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaean, a member of the court of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. Now while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word, and I pray that, God, you would, uh, you would increase in our hearts. Lord, you would increase and I would decrease, God. I pray that that would be our prayer tonight. And as going into 2016, that you would teach us to worship, that you would teach us um, how to seek after you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, uh, Christians are led, by these three verses, we can understand that Christians are led by the Holy Spirit from a continual practice of worship, okay? So if we see the Christian life as a race or the, or the Christian life as, as a line, the starting point of the Christian life is worship, is confessing that Jesus is Lord, right? That's how we begin our worship, uh, the life of worship. We worship Christ. Christians are led by the Holy Spirit from a continual practice of worship. This passage leads us to question tonight, well, how, how am I to be led in this way? Like, I don't, a lot of times we don't hear uh, the voice of the Spirit, like a verbal voice or, or even a, a, a voice coming from our hearts that say um, things like this, you know. Um, it's as clear as this. Um, and so our, our question should be, how do we get to that point? How do we, how do we know, um, how do we hear from the Holy Spirit and it's very simple. I think this passage tells us that Christians, you and I, we are led by the Holy Spirit. How? From a continual practice of worship. And I want to pro pro propose um, to you, if you are willing to worship the Lord, even through such intensity as prayer and fasting, the Holy Spirit will speak and lead you to his will for you at any given time, even 2016. Read that one more time. If you in this room, are willing to worship the Lord, even so far through such intensity as prayer, which is a simple thing, and fasting, the Holy Spirit will speak. He will speak, and he will lead you to his will for your life at any given time. God wants us to be willing to be led by him. God wants us to be willing to be led by him. He has tons of things for you to do this year, 
Each of you, he has a plan for each of you individually this year in 2016 of how he is already preparing people for conversations that they will have with you. Uh, Jesus already knows what struggles you will go through and what temptations you will face. His desire is not for you to triumph over those with an attitude of pride or even self-production, but God wants you to rely on his leadership in everything that you face this next year. Isn't that wonderful that God has a plan for you this year, 2016? Right? Before we, he had a plan for you in 2015. That's been accomplished. Now 2016 is coming and God is going to put people in your life. He's going to put situations in your life. He knows you're going to go through temptations and he's already prepared the path for you. That's wonderful. That's a, that's a trusting um, a faith that we have in God's sovereignty. And what these prophets and teachers understood in this passage was that they did not need to move until God directed them. You can only be directed, though, from a practice of worship. We like that, right? We like that sentence that I just read there. Uh, we can only be moved if God will direct it, us. And a lot of you, a lot of us in this church even sometimes, we, we like to say that, well, God will move me when he wants to move me, okay? God will make me do a ministry or he'll help me serve when he wants me to, right? I'm comfortable right here where I'm sitting, right? But you can only be directed from a practice of worship. See, the whole point of missions, and this is a very missional passage, as you know, the whole point of you sharing the gospel, the whole point in evangelism is that there are those people out there that do not worship God. Correct? There are folks that don't worship God, and the whole point of us telling them, it's not so much telling them, it's so that they will come to know God, that they will, too, worship Him. So you see, missions, and really any any will that God has for your life, it all begins and ends with worship. It all begins and ends with worship. How can you share, how can you go on mission for God or do anything for God if you do not worship him? You cannot. You will be an empty vessel, right? You will share the gospel from an arrogance and pride. Because some of us do that. We, we kind of build up this kind of religious uh, wall, right? Or even something that may have started out as genuine, but then it kind of grows cold and becomes more and more practice instead of love, right? A more of an obligation instead of love. And then we know we are to share the gospel with this person God has placed in our lives, and yet we share from an attitude of arrogance and pride. Have you ever been there? I've been there before. I've done that. Well, you're wrong. I'm right. You know, kind of, kind of attitude. Instead of how Jesus was when he saw the crowds and he felt, as we learned in Sunday school this morning, right, Wes, agony, right? He felt compassion for them. They were sheep without a shepherd lost. So how can you, how can you share? How can you evangelize? How can you really do anything for God in 2016 unless you start with worshiping him? You cannot. You cannot. Without worship, missions, and evangelism, is pointless. So how can we get to this place in uh, these first three verses in chapter 13? How can we get to this place as these five individuals, these, these prophets and these teachers, right, of Antioch, how, how can we get to that where they were, to where they hear the Holy Spirit speak to them so clearly? Well, I'm going to give you just a few ways. I'm going to give you four ways, and it's going to be very simple tonight. Very simple. I want you to leave knowing one, two, three, four things that I can do in 2016 on how to worship the God more the God, worship God, Jesus, more fully. Number one, we must be patient and recognize our need for God's leadership. Number one, we must be patient and we must recognize our need for God's leadership. If Jesus is not your Lord, then there is no worship, right? There is no point. You have to start off, to real, start off realizing that you need God, that you need God's leadership in your life. Who do you follow? You usually... You know, you follow a leader. A leader is usually someone that has authority in your life, right? They're, you wouldn't, leader and authority, leader and boss, leader and Lord kind of go hand in hand, right? You must recognize the, your need for God's leadership. You can be acquainted with Jesus. You can make him a ritual in your life or something to go to when it's convenient. But this sort of worship doesn't really please God. When you call Jesus Lord, right, when you call him Lord, you are calling him leader. And we must recognize that first. If God leads you, that means he is the boss. He is the leader, right? Any of y'all ever played? I, I love, you know, we, we have uh, two little girls, as you know, right? We have a three-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old. And, -year -old. and uh, follow the leader in the game, right? Everyone knows, follow the leader. Well, there's really no point in playing the game if you don't have a leader, right? Lily loves to be the leader and follow the leader, right? She will 
kind of jerk Adley where she wants to go, you know. And, uh, but she's the boss, right? She's the leader. She's a self-proclaimed um, lord over Adley, right? And so um, that's, a, that's an elementary example, but I want you guys to understand it's, it's really that simple when we say we follow Jesus as Lord. God, you are the leader. I'll do what you tell me to do. I'll do what you do. And as we found out even this morning, um, in, our, in our Sunday school class, a lot of this is coming, if, if, if you're a young couple, you're not coming to our Sunday school class, it's a lot of fun, so it's really good as we're diving into Matthew, but um, you, following the Lord and, and actually mimicking Christ will actually lead us into some pretty dangerous situations, right? So I want to encourage you, we must be patient and recognize our need for God's leadership, and that's the way we worship Him. You don't simply start a ministry in 2016 You don't simply start a ministry at this church and hope that God begins to lead it, right? No, you wait. You look to see what he is doing around you, what opportunities he is giving you, and you wait to hear from the Holy Spirit. We did that in 2015, right? We did that in 2015. We would try. It would sometimes be frustrating at times, I know, in staff meeting. We would try to push a certain thing, a certain ministry, and and it it would probably start off a little bit and then maybe not go so well, you know, and then later on, and a lot of these are my ideas, or Brother Kevin's ideas, Jim's ideas, whatever, you know, these different ideas, uh, David, I, I'll let you out, David, uh, so all these ideas, and sometimes it wouldn't take off, and I, and I would say the ministries that we prayed for, for God to lead firsthand, we saw amazing fruit, right? Even, even if you, I would encourage you, even praying for your pastor in the ministry of sharing the word every Sunday morning, you will see a, a wonderful a wonderful change, a wonderful growth in your own heart in 2016. I'm sure Brother Kevin would love that. (laughs) But in 2015, we saw the needs that God was showing us around us, right? We saw things, a a simple ministry that as even like a basketball goal can bring to us, right? We saw saw the needs around us with with kids that were were needing someone to love them, right? Someone to, to, to share simple acts of kindness with them, right? And we've seen God grow that. We've seen them grow that, and the gospel is being shared to people that otherwise would not hear it. That's a good thing. That's a good thing that was not led just by saying, uh, let's just start this. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, that, in fact, when I first came, if you remember, Brother Kevin, uh, when I first came to 38th Avenue, my biggest thing, what I wanted to do, and one of the whole reasons I, I feel, prayed to God, Lord, you're leading me to 38th Avenue Baptist Church is because, Brother Kevin said, we have some internationals coming to our church, and they need someone to disciple them. I thought, man, that's right up my alley. Let's go do that. You know, that's a, that's a ministry that I love and a ministry that I miss, but that's not something I've really done much of at 38th Avenue Baptist Church. In fact, God has challenged me to look at other cultures, the cultures that are even around us here and now, right, that are different from my own. And God has used not only myself, but many of you in this church to share the gospel with those. Something that's very uncomfortable for me, God has allowed me to do. Why? Because... We were sensitive to God's leadership. So that's one thing I will praise you guys for at 38th Avenue Baptist Church in 2015 that you did well. So we now, as 2016, that's in the past, as 2016 is looking ahead, I pray that you once again will look and recognize your need for God's leadership. So, number one, we must be patient and recognize our need for God's leadership. Number two, we must value personal and corporate worship in our lives. We must value personal and corporate worship in our lives. Now, we aren't sure by this passage that these prophets and teachers were leading this kind of movement of fasting and pray and worship, but what we do know is that the church at Antioch practiced these things regularly, right? Three things, prayer, worshiping, and fasting. They did it regularly. In fact, we see back in, uh, in chapter 11 how um, there was even a, a, it was foretold that there would be a famine that would come just because they were praying. They were praying, you know, Lord, we're going to meet together, we're going to worship you, and we're going to pray to you. And all of a sudden, God reveals something that they weren't even looking for, right? I'll let you guys read that, Acts chapter 11 in Antioch. The same thing. They were, just, they were just doing church. They were just going to church, right? They were meeting together. They weren't neglecting corporate worship. They weren't neglecting personal worship. They were meeting together. They were praying and fasting together. And that's when the Holy Spirit spoke and gave them direction. When we value personal and corporate worship in our lives, the Spirit will simply speak. How can I hear from the Holy Spirit in 2016? How can I hear from the Holy Spirit at any time in my life? Value worship in your life, personal and corporate. Worship in your personal life and worship here. 
corporately with a body of believers. And it's such a simple thing, but it seems so tough to actually do this at times. We put off coming to church. We are lazy and prideful with our personal walk with Christ, thinking at times that we don't even need the bread of life today. Why should we continue to come to church to be around other believers? Because worship is here. You want to get up, you get up on Sunday morning, and you're like, Ugh, you know, I don't really want to go to church. You know, I do that sometimes. I know Brother Kevin does that sometimes if we're, if we're human, right? If Brother Kevin is, I am. <laughs> yeah, I know I get up sometimes on Sunday mornings and I think, man, I just don't want to go. I don't want to go. But I pray, I, I, I think, why should I go? And if you ever ask that question, why should you go? Because worship, God's, God is being worshipped here. And I definitely want to be a part of that. Do you want to be a part of where God is being worshipped? As I do. Why should we continue to go to church to be around other believers? Because worship is here, and we are led by the Holy Spirit in worship. And you have an opportunity to come. You have an opportunity to worship in your daily lives. Here is a simple truth that you can tell yourself in 2016. I make time for the things that are valuable to me. I make time. I don't find time. I make time for the things that are valuable to me. You most certainly have time to worship God in your daily life. You most certainly have time to turn off the TV, put the phone down, pick up the Bible and worship Him in your daily life. Where is your treasure? Make time to worship Jesus personally and corporately in 2016. Ask God to give you a fresh love. If you're saying, well, Nick, I, I know that's what I'm supposed to do. I know that's one thing that, uh, that the Bible tells me to do, that the pastor tells me to do. Church, my, my Christian friends, I know that's something I want to do. I want to do it, but I just... I just, I just don't. Ask God to give you a fresh love and a fresh desire to worship him. You know that he, lo- he would love to hear that from you. Lord God, I don't know, to, you know, I'm so busy. Will you please, please give me time. Lord, please show me what to sacrifice so that I can worship you. Matthew chapter 5 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Are you looking for satisfaction in 2016? So, number one, we must be patient and recognize our need for God's leadership. Number two, we must value personal and corporate worship in our lives. Number three, we must practice fasting and prayer. Now, I'm just going from this passage here, okay, from uh, Acts chapter 13, 1 through 3, and I've kind of mentioned that a little bit uh, last Sunday night, but I really want us, uh, and this is just a personal goal, but I think it's something we should do corporately as well, to make fasting and prayer an uh, a practice in our life, a discipline in our life. Look at verse 2 real quick. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work for which I have called them. The Holy Spirit did not speak to them until they were worshiping and fasting. One question, how badly do you want Jesus in your life? Just think about that question. How badly do I want Jesus in my life? Have you come to the point where you've said, I've had enough, I need you, Jesus? You know what fasting is? I'm going to give you a definition of fasting. Fasting is saying, this much, God, I want you. That's what fasting is. This much, God, I give this away, right? I, I, I kind of prolong a little suffering. I, I, I give up a, a meal. I give up TV time. I give up... Um, whatever, my weekend, whatever, this much, oh God, I want you. How much do you want Jesus in your life? Do you think Jesus ever got tired? Do you think Jesus ever got frustrated with those around him? Do you think he got upset with family and had trouble with his relationships? It wasn't rest. This is so interesting about Jesus in the Bible here. It wasn't rest or even a good meal or some more TV time that brought him out of these things. It was time away in the desolate place, the place where the Trinity met and he worshiped. I want to encourage you in 2016 to to take time to to turn the TV off, take time to to, to make time for your personal worship. And I would encourage you to do that through prayer and fasting. If you're wanting to know where God can use you in sharing the gospel this coming up year, begin your year with fasting. I'm going to look over at John chapter 4. You can turn over there real quick. John chapter 4, verse 31. John chapter 4, verse 31, um, when Jesus meets us, a Samarian, a Samaritan woman, right? Um, and she had, she had lived kind of a, a pretty risque life. She had been with a lot of men, 
right? And Jesus kind of, uh, he was just there, and the Lord gave him an opportunity, and he shared, right? He shared the gospel. She ran off and, and got other people, and the crowds were kind of coming back to meet Jesus, and the disciples were coming as well, and they, were, they didn't know what had happened. But look at John chapter 4, beginning of verse 31. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. They went and got some food for him. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him something to eat? <laughs> Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Are you looking for the harvest? Are you looking for the harvest? When I say fasting, I'm saying putting away food. I'm saying putting away um, things that, that cause you to sin. I'm saying putting away uh, TV time, time that would take you away from the Lord, whatever that is. You know, I'm just saying some things that are personal for me, right? Whatever that is, the Lord is speaking to you now about. Put it away and give it to the Lord. Why? Um, because your food should be to do the will of him who sent you. This much, oh God, I want you. This much, oh God, I want them to worship you. I see Jesus. I love this passage because I see Jesus kind of looking out. He's hungry. He's the one that sent the disciples to go get some food. He's hungry. And so he's sitting here, and, and he's sharing the gospel with, with this woman, right? And, uh, and she goes to bring more people to him. And, and, and something that he, kind of, that, that he kind of feeds off of or something that replenishes him isn't the food. Right? It isn't the things that would normally give you rest or comfort or satisfaction. No, it's seeing that there are people that need to know him and that he has an opportunity to bring them to worship God. Right? You have an opportunity next week to do that, don't you? You have an opportunity to, to do that. I, I, I want to challenge you. Some of you guys have been, some, have been inviting people, right? And you're thinking they just won't come, right? I've invited this person before, but they won't come. I've invited my neighbor. I've invited my family member. I've invited this person I know who needs Jesus, but they simply will not come. Whatever reason that is. Maybe they think you're goofy. I don't know. Maybe they uh, don't like this church. Maybe, um, I don't know. Whatever it is. I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you to maybe fast one lunch period, one, one meal this week, one, just one meal. Fast for that opportunity for someone to come. You invite and you fast and you pray, God, I want them to come and hear the gospel. One meal. I want to challenge you to do that. I'll be doing that. I'll challenge you to do that as well. This much, oh God, I want you. This much, oh God, I want them to worship you. So, number one, we must be patient and recognize our need for God's leadership. Number two, we must value personal and corporate worship in our lives. Number three, we must practice fasting and prayer. It is a command. And my final thing to help you in worshiping Jesus this next year. Number four, we must have faith to step forward in following him. Number four, we must have faith to step forward in following him. It is one thing to hear the Spirit. It is another thing entirely to obey the Spirit. When the church in Antioch heard the Holy Spirit speak, they continued to pray and fast. Look at verse 3, um, back in Acts chapter 13. Look at verse 3. It says, then after fasting and praying, they lay laid their hands on them and sent them off. It's very interesting that they, they, were, they were worshiping and they were fasting, right? And then the Spirit spoke to them and said, this is what I want you to do. And you don't, notice the number, verse 3 is there. It doesn't just skip to verse 4 and then they sent them out. No, they said, okay, well, let's, let's do a little more prayer and a little more fasting just to be sure, right? Now, we must have faith. We must have faith to step out, to step forward in following him. When the church in Antioch heard the Holy Spirit speak, they continued to pray. They continued to fast. It was only after this step that they stepped out on faith and sent Barnabas and Saul to Cyprus to spread the gospel. How important is this? Like, that's really nice, Nick, but how important is this? Is this? It takes just a, just a small church, a small church at Antioch, right? This is a church mainly made up of Hellenists. These were Greek-speaking Jews, people that the Jews didn't really get along with, right? And they, were, they were Gentiles. And he had these five kind of leaders in the church. And they were worshiping and they were praying and they were fasting. And then you see them being sent out. This is Paul that was sent out in this. Paul didn't, Paul could not go on his missionary journey. Paul could not go until the church at Antioch sent him. If they were led by the Spirit to send them. Why is that so important? Because you are sitting here today, you have a relationship with God 
with Jesus Christ today because of this church at Antioch, because they prayed and they fasted and they worshiped, how much more, how much more will God bless us at 38th Avenue? How much more will he use us if we do the same thing, if we pray and we worship and we fast? Just five leaders. There's more, there's more than five leaders in this church, right? It wasn't a big church. It was only after this that they stepped out on faith and sent Barnabas and Saul to Cyprus to spread the gospel. As a church, we too must step out on faith. And this church has a wonderful past, uh, but the past is done with, right? It's, it's not here anymore. It's now. 2015 is done with. It's over. What does God want you to do now? What does God want us to do now? I pray and I ask you guys that you will join me this year in worshiping God with much prayer and fasting. And I hope you will. And I don't say that in, a, in some way to say, well, Nick, you know, you know, Jesus told us instructions on fasting and prayer to not do that so openly, right? To be praised by men. I don't, I don't want you to, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm encouraging you and I want to challenge you to make that a part of your life this coming up year. Why? Because Jesus deserves to be worshipped and there's people not only here but in the nations and all around us in many countries that don't worship him and need to worship him. Amen? We're going to say, uh, we're going to say a quick prayer and uh, I'm going to just give you all a moment of silence, okay, just so you can pray in your hearts for just a little bit. Uh, for this upcoming year, for God, uh, maybe something in this message challenged you. Uh, maybe you've I don't know, the Spirit spoke to you in another way, and I just want to give you a chance to, to speak to God for just a moment, and then I'll pray and conclude us, and we'll be done, okay? Let's pray. Holy Spirit, I think at times we don't, we don't want to listen to you. I think we know, Lord. I think we hear your word preached in this pulpit every Sunday. I think you've written it on our hearts to know what we ought to do. And I don't know, Lord, if it's the, the cares of this world or whatever is, is choking us, Lord God, but you are strong and you are powerful to, to defeat that. Lord, I pray for, for a fresh encounter with you. I pray for a new hunger, a new thirst for your righteousness. I pray for those in these pews that don't know you, that they will, that they will reach out and worship you, that they will accept you as Savior. God, I pray that as we make prayer and fasting and, and worship a priority in our lives this year, this next week, tomorrow, Lord, that you would give us opportunities not only to know you more, but to bring others to know you. It's in your authority, Jesus, I pray. Amen.